Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So in today's video, we're going to do the precursor into all of my series about MicroPython and how to control things over the cloud and do just about everything you ever wanted. I've already released the application which allows all these controls and now I want to prepare your environment for coding this. So I'm going to prepare you in the same environment I'm running so we're always on the same page um, and you can always come back and double check this if you screw something up. So let's get started here. The first thing we need is a program called Visual Studio Code. It's free and you can download it and here's the link uh, which I'll have down below. Windows, Mac, whatever you want. We're going to be covering Windows in this video. So that's the first step. The next step we need Python. So we're going to need Python 3.7.7. Again, it'll be linked down below. And the reason why I chose this version is because I'm using it and it's been stable. So we're, so again, we'll be on the same page here. If anything happens or I see any issues, I could also fix it for you and show you how to fix it. Uh, in this page, you just go down here and you download the executable installer, whether it's the x86-64 or the x86 executable installer. Very important you do that. And also take note where you install it. So once you have VS Code installed and Python, we need to press the Windows key and type in power and we can see this Windows PowerShell open. So we're going to go ahead and click on it and I'm going to go ahead and zoom. So theoretically, Python is installed. And if we run Python, um, you might, you, you'll more than likely get an error there, but you probably get something like this, like that. That's okay. Everything's installed, but we just need to tell it where to find it. So what happens next? So let's go ahead and just close that up. We click Windows key and we're going to type edit environment variables and that should pop up right there. And we are going to take full advantage of this. So let's move this to the side. So now we need to find out where Python is installed. And again, the best way to do this is Windows key. We'll type Python and we should find Python right there. Now what we want to do is we want to go ahead, right click, open file location. Once we're here, uh, depending on your installation, but this is not the correct place because if we look at the type here, or if you look really closely, this is a shortcut. Want to click? You want to right-click it again, and we're going to type "Open File Location." Now the folder structure should look like this. This is the correct location. So what we want to do is we want to go here and make sure Python.exe is there. So we want to go ahead and control, just copy all of this. We want to go to our path right there up here, not the bottom one, the top one, and we're going to click edit. And once we click edit, we want to click new, and then we're just going to paste it down here. As you can tell, it pasted down there. So it just, I just pasted it right here. Once I click new, I'm going to press OK. Now we're not done yet. We still need one of the most important folders, which is the scripts folder. So we're going to click that and we should be greeted with a bunch of this stuff or maybe not as much as me. But anyways, you get here. And again, we click up here and control all, just copy the whole thing. And again, we're going to make sure we're on path, edit, and then we're going to go ahead, new. I'm going to move this here and uh, I'm just going to paste it. You might not have as many as I do, uh, especially if you don't code. Um, but yeah, and then you just paste it down. As you can tell, I have it multiple times because I had to do this video a bunch of times because it was so long. Um, and yeah, there we go. Click OK. We're going to click OK and we're going to exit. Now what we want to do is just to double check everything's working, we're going to go ahead and open PowerShell again. And uh, I'm going to zoom in for you guys. So there we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and type just pip. So pip, there we go. And if you get this, then everything's good, which is really, really nice. So the next step is to open VS Code. So let's go ahead and open VS Code here. And what we want to do is we want to do open folder and go ahead and choose a folder. So I've chose this YouTube folder, but I'm going to make a new one called uh, tutorial here. So tutorial inside that folder, and we're just going to double click it and select. So now we have a project folder, which is called tutorial here. And the next thing we want to do is start a new file. So we're going to go ahead and click start new file. I'm just going to put a hash sign in here and I'm going to do control S to save. So I'm going to save it and we're going to say first tutorial dot py dot py is very important i'm going to click enter and it changes everything and now we even have the python logo here so just to make sure that our vs code has python installed we're going to go to the extensions which is these squares right here and we're going to go right there we're just going to type python and it should be the first one that pops up which is by microsoft and we're going to click install mine says uninstall because obviously it's installed and now we know for sure we have python installed and once that's done you should see something down here that says python 3.7.7 and um yeah so that's good now we need to download the tool in order to flash the microcontroller which is going to be very easy from now on so we're going to click the x in this little icon right here 
and uh, we should get this to open up. Next, we're going to click terminal here. And this just gives us the same PowerShell that we saw there. So I'm going to go ahead and type clear. And now all we need to do is type PIP install ESP tool. Everything is going to be super easy from here. I already have it installed. Oh, actually, I don't have it in my virtual environment. But yeah, anyways. So we'll just let that install and finish up. All right. So if you get this error, which more than likely you will. So if you got an error when installing the PS, uh, the ESP tool, which was pip e install ESP tool. If you got an error there, what you want to do is you're going to want to type pip install and then dash dash user dash dash upgrade pip. And then once we run that, it should download and install. So this way it'll update our installer. This is our package installer. Basically, then what we want to do is pip install ESP tool. And that should install it without a problem there. And again, I'll have all of this in the GitHub, all these commands down below uh, in, the, in the GitHub file. So you could just copy paste these stuff. So now we have the ESP tool installed. Let's double check if it's running. So we're going to type ESP tool. Let's just do ESP tool. And I'm pressing tab to continue this stuff. So yeah, we just, yeah, that usually happens when the first time you run anything, if you have antivirus, so it'll just double check your stuff. So we're going to go ahead and type ESP tool. And as you can tell, we don't have an error. And we have a bunch of output here, which is really, really great. So once you install ESP tool, we need to get the MicroPython firmware for the ESP32 or the ESP8266. So if we go to micropython.org, which again, I'll have linked down below, and you go to the download section, uh, you scroll down, you'll find ESP8266 and ESP32. Uh, depending on what you have, that's what you want to install, but I'm going to go ahead and show you both. So I'm going to open these. So first we'll start with the ESP8266. What we want to do is we want to scroll down and we want to download the 1.14 here. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on that and it should download down there. Next one, let's go ahead and double check the ESP32. So on the ESP32, you want to scroll down to version three here and download this one right there, which is the first one, 1.14. So I'm going to go ahead and download that as well. So now I have both of the bin files. So we want to locate them here. So you want to go ahead and locate your bin file and we're going to go ahead and make this lower. So here's my ESP32. You can tell from the name. I'm going to go ahead and actually just drag it right there inside my project folder that I did. And I'm also going to grab my uh, ESP8266 here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it and just rename it. I'm just going to say ESP32. And what I'm doing is I'm clicking on it, pressing F2, and I'm going to call this one the ESP8266. It'll be really easy, especially when you rename it, because when we flash it, we have to actually call it. And now we have both of these set and done. So what we're going to do is we are going to flash the ESP8266 with MicroPython. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that the drivers are actually installed. So we're going to go ahead and plug this guy in. And once we plug it in, we want to click the windows and we're going to type device manager, which is that one right there. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. We're going to bring it closer and under com ports here, if we click on it, we should find it installed. Now, if you, if you see it with uh, yellow, then you need to install that driver. And there's plenty of tutorials, which will show you how to do that. So right now ours is installed and we know it's on COM port eight. Now this is very important and make sure you take note of that. So what is this? This is an ESP8266. Okay. So for the ESP8266, the first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and uh, erase the flash, which is erase all of the memory here, just in case. So we don't have any problems in the future. And the way we're going to run that is right here, which is ESP tool port, it's going to be com eight, like we just saw, and erase flash. So we're going to go ahead and just copy this. And I'm going to click down here. And I'm just going to paste it. And I'm going to press enter. And now we're just going to wait for it. So it's saying it's erasing the flash it might take a while. And just like that, it erased, it took eight seconds now. So the next thing we want to do is we want to flash the micro Python firmware, which is the ones we downloaded. And the reason why I told you to change the name is so when we put the command, it's much easier. As you can tell, there's the bin file and it's in the same folder where we are right here. And just to double check, we'll do it clear and you could type LS and we can see that the, the file is right here, which is the ESP8266. And it's that one right there, which is again, the one we downloaded and just renamed it. So what we want to do is we're going to go back to the readme here and we are going to just copy this command. Now make sure you change your com port. So this is going to be ESP tool port com. And this is the number where you have to change here. Uh, leave everything as is, except if you change, if you name the, the bin file to something else, like an a.bin, then that's where you're going to want to change it to like an a.bin. But I named it here ESP8266. So I'm just going to copy this 
copy and I'm just going to paste it down here. So I'll just clear it so it'll be in the middle of the screen and I'm just going to paste it and I'm going to press enter. And now we just wait for it. And as you can tell, it's flashing, which is really, really, really awesome. And just like that, we have MicroPython on the ESP8266. Now for the ESP32, then you just do this flash command and uh, this uh, command for flashing, which again will be in the GitHub readme here. You could follow along with that readme as well. And uh, it's just the same thing. Now, if it's not flashing, then what you want to do is unplug it and then plug it, count one second, and then, and then run press enter and that will get it right most of the time sometimes if something is constantly running on there it won't want to flash and it won't synchronize correctly but what you want to do is just unplug it and then again plug it in wait a second then press enter and let it do the erasing and then it'll do the flashing much easier as well and um, yeah so just to confirm it's running i'm going to go ahead and open arduino ide and you could download the ide um, but i know for a fact everything is running because everything was uh, clear here and we can click the tools and we're going to go to COM port and just choose the correct COM port. Mine is COM port 8. And we can just click the serial monitor. And now from this bar right here, we can actually talk with it. So we can just say import OS and see what it gives us. Oh, that's a good sign. And we could just say print hello. And we're going to press enter. And it printed hello. So this is beautiful Python. If you run this on your PC, it's the same thing. Now we know we have Python on there. And it's actually running Python as we speak. So in the next video, I'll show you how to connect and actually control the tank and everything that I mentioned earlier. And um, yeah, and that's how you double check if everything is running. And I really hope you guys found it useful because this is a very important video that's going to introduce us to everything else that we're going to be doing. It's going to be much easier from now on. And well, that's really it, guys. Everything's linked down below. If you come support me on Patreon, that'd be super awesome. And uh, the tank tutorial will be out next. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.